real estate agents. Welcome to the Weekly Closer. I'm your host, Jeff Underwood, along with Joey Sampaga, the man with the plan. How's it going, Joey? What's going on? Well, you know, doing a podcast. Nice. Absolutely. Have an awesome guest with us today, Daniel Barraza. How's it going, Daniel? Really good. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. Boom. Here we go. Yeah. So, Daniel, um, I know we talked a little bit before we got started, but let's first introduce yourself as how long you've been in the business, who are you currently working with, or who's your broker, and then tell us what compelled you to actually get into real estate. Sure. So this 31st of this month of March is going to be my sixth year in the business. Uh, I'm with My Home Group Realty. I was actually agent number 13 that signed up with My Home Group Realty. They have uh, close to a thousand agents now. So, so you're not so you're not uh, superstitious. No, you didn't want somebody else to say. <laughs> no, I actually I actually like kidding. that number. I actually, like, there we go. Yeah, actually, I was born on October 13th, so that's that's oh, my. Oh, there we go. That's I was my twentieth, so October. Yeah. Oh, really? Cool. We, a week away. So, thirteenth uh, is my lucky number, and I was thirteen agents signed up, and um, now they're close to a thousand agents. I was with wow. them. I was with my home group when they blew up, and uh, I blew up with them as well. We grew together. No, that's great. That's great. So, uh, now that you've been with them for six years, you've seen massive growth in your business. I've been a realtor for six years. Six I've, years. I've been oh, with, you've been a realtor for six years. Yeah, right, right. I've been with my home group for about four and a half years. Four and a half. But you've seen a major transition in your business. I mean, it's just continued to blossom, right? So, when I started, the reason I became a realtor, this is the why I got my real estate license, okay. is um, in 2008, I got laid off from okay. my uh, from a corporate job, getting paid really well, getting paid a nice salary, company truck, the whole nine yards, gas cart. I was living life. I was living large, you know. There we go. Got laid off. I was carless, jobless, mm -hmm. womanless. I mean, I didn't have anything. <laughs> and ironically, that that's when I met my my now wife. When I met her, I didn't have a car, so I know she married me for the right reason. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So I didn't have anything, um, and I was losing my house. I did a loan modification on my house. Okay. And my uh, my brothers and some family members were going through the same thing, so I helped them do a loan modification successfully. A light bulb went on, and I started helping people do loan mods. Uh, from 2008 through 2010, I did about 155 successful loan modifications. Wow. At the end of 2010, a lot of those people came knocking on my door saying, hey, uh, you lowered the payment, thank you, but I want out. And right. the only way to get out was to do a short sell. Yeah. And that's when I got my real estate license was to help people do short sales. All right. So the transition right. from short sales in 2011 was huge yeah. um, to transitioning to a traditional market in 2013, 2014. Right. I was worried about that transition phase because uh, obviously I got into this doing short sales. And the majority of people in the, in the industry were, were saying, you, you're getting into this business to do short sales? You are nuts. But people were running away from them. I was running yeah. towards them. Okay. And uh, but I was luckily uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to transition uh, into that traditional market today. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, okay, I have something in my head that I just can't get out right now. So you mentioned Carlos, right? And that's how. And you met your wife. Yeah, I met her in two thousand. So did it go like this? Hey, would you like to go out? Can you pick me up at seven? <laughs> 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 That's kind of how I it worked. Thinking, yeah, I'm just thinking. I, it was in my head, and I was like, "Oh man, uh, okay." No, so. we were, we were. That's how we, when we started dating. She was picking me up, literally. Awesome. Yeah. Well, hey, remember, you can always watch us too. Uh, we are on video right now, so if you if you want to go watch uh, Daniel's a crack up over here with you us, you can watch me so. turn red. Yeah. Uh, no, no. <laughs> um, so I know that before we started, you you know, we were talking a little bit about where you get your business. So what would you say is like? What are you doing right now? That's the most success you know, most successful strategy you're using, I guess, to get your business. So again, uh, that 155 successful loan modifications and they were all coming back saying, hey, we need a, yeah, we need out. Um, I think it was that customer service. People knew I was honest. They trusted me. They, um, they came back because they trusted me. They came back because they, they just trusted me and, and yeah. they trusted me because of the honesty, the integrity, uh, always answering their phones providing first class service and nowadays i read the book raving fans and on there oh, yeah. it says it's yeah, for sure. it's uh you know it's so easy to provide customer service because people expect the worst so if, yeah. if you just do the bare minimum you're considered doing good customer service but if you wow. go beyond that you know if you answer your phone and if you get back to them in a timely manner if you're honest with them if you're on top of it uh people are that you create raving fans right. they're right. they're not only loyal customers but they are you know 
constant they're your cheerleaders they constantly mention you and stuff like that absolutely yeah seth godin would say they're your sneezers yeah um they will sneeze all over people for you <laughs> exactly <laughs> and and yeah when a, lot, a lot of times on facebook you know mm. they tag me and i'm go in there see what they tag me and it's always one of their friends saying hey anybody know a good real estate agent and they're always tagging me they're always so i think the re- what it was is providing that customer service yeah providing that care uh putting their interests above my interest and i think that's what's gotten me a lot of the referral business that I currently have right now. Yeah, and, and you mentioned earlier uh, when we were talking that the majority of your business is from your sphere. You're not really doing paid ads online or any of that stuff, really. It's well, mostly correct. Your That's database. about six, seven, sixty-five percent of my business comes from my from my sphere, from referrals, from my database. Um, I did just start, like I told you earlier, I started yeah. Commissions Inc. Right, just because. Uh, I know that I'll get more business out of it, so I, I just started Commissions Inc. Yeah, having a good CRM makes a big difference. Yeah. It will going forward for you, for sure. So I can't imagine to see what your business is like two years, two from, years now, from now. Two years from now, yeah. If you're I'm putting excited. a system I'm so, in place and you're I'm already so psyched about it, yeah. rocking it out there, right? I'm so psyched about, about that because uh, I hear a lot of good things about it. And um, a lot of my uh, mentors and a lot of the masterminds I'm, I'm with, one of them with, with Chris Self and uh, yeah. you know all those agents there have – Boomtown or Commission Zinc or something like that. So I, yeah. I'm excited to see what that's going to bring. Well, Chris said really good things about you. So good. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. He said, no, nah, Dan, you got to get him on the show. He is awesome. Well, thank you for having um, me. Yeah, absolutely. So, so with your, um, with your sphere, do you do a lot of calls? I mean, do you call that sphere a lot? I mean, is that your number one way of calling? Do you do expired? I mean, do you- no, I don't do expired or canceled. Okay. I call my sphere. I call my past clients. Yeah. Um. I I use the greatness tracker. Uh, that's from the core training. The cra- okay. greatness tracker is just like a it's a piece of paper that has a bunch of boxes, and you have to call sixty. You have to talk, not call, talk to sixty people a week, uh, minimum sixty people a week. Wow. Uh, take out to have fifteen face to faces. Okay. And have break bread, lunch, or coffee with at least five people a week. So that's what I. That I kinda, would definitely get you business. I think. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, so I, it's as easy as that, right? I mean, agents just need to. I was doing a podcast with with Mark and Jeremy, my brokers. Yeah. They have the daily dose. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I was I, I was ta- we we're talking about exactly this. I said, "This is the form I use. It's called the Grandest Tracker. Fill it out every single week, and you'll get business." And and some agents would call me or text me and said, "That just seems too simple." <laughs> it, it is that simple. I think yeah, us as right. as as realtors as agents, we complicate the crap out of stuff. I mean, we yes. try to overcomplicate, and it's Guys, it's not that. I mean, just call people, pick up the phone, call people, answer your phone, return phone right. calls. That's how it really takes. So the, the premise is the more people you talk to, the better chance you have of building your business. Correct. That's just the bottom line. Correct. Um, and I was reading something not too long ago, or maybe it was a video from uh, Simon Sinek. When you're out breaking bread, right, when you're having lunch with somebody, he, he was talking about how making sure the person with you knows that they have 100% of your attention. Yes. So... These things here, if you can see in the, the video, obviously phones, right? Uh, he was talking about how even if you lay the phone on the table next to you, that that gives a message to this person that you're having lunch with that maybe they're not the priority mm-hmm. right now. Even if you flip it over, if the phone is anywhere to be seen, right? I have mine out because <laughs> I'm doing yeah. some sound effect thing for us. But I noticed you don't have your phone out on the table. So, you know, that that's something we all need to understand. Put the phone away. Give them 100% of your attention because that will lead to a better relationship. Correct. Absolutely. And our mission statement is provide first-class service one client at a time. And the reason I put that in there one client at a time because my staff, my transaction coordinator, listing coordinator, my assistant, I want everybody to know that one client at a time means when you're in front of that client, they're the only client you have. No, you don't answer anybody's calls. You don't answer anybody's your in front of that client, they're your only client. Yeah. First class service, one client at a time. No, that's great. That's great advice. I like that a lot. Okay, so I know that we're you mostly get your business from your sphere, right? Your sphere, but you do use Facebook for some things. And um, are we using Facebook Live kind of for that oh, yeah. organic? Not a lot of paid stuff, but I mean organic reach, right? Yes. So I do what's called pop buys. Okay. Okay. So and I do this with clients who have referred you know business or who just bought their third house with me, I'll do what's called a pop by. And I don't let them know. I just swing by and I'm, as I'm swinging by, I have my phone out, Uh Facebook live. And I, and I'll (laughs) tell them, I was like, you know, if I'm driving up somebody's driveway, does this look like your driveway? 
and I bring a pop by, I bring a, a small gift. And wow. it can be, you know, nice silverware, silverware sets. It yeah. can be a, a countertop oven. Uh, it can be, you know, whatever. Right. So would that be for, so that could be a business to business referral relationship or a client that's Correct. referred to you, right? Correct. And you're just kind of showing up. Just show up. I can see Daniel already. He's got his phone out, right? And he's like, hey guys, we're Facebook Live <laughs> right now. Look at this. <laughs> right? Well, a lot of them, I, I, uh, I ask, I always ask for permission first. Okay, like, that's good. You know, the ones I don't ask for permission, I shut the live like when I'm knocking on the door. It's like, okay, I gotta go, guys. I don't have permission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you don't mention anything beforehand. Right. Okay. To show up and they're I mean, the expression on their face is priceless. Yeah. I bet priceless. It is. And then they're like, again, raving fans. They're talking about it. They're, you know, and then other people, I'll I'll get messages on Facebook and they say, Hey, you know, you helped so and so buy a house. I was like, "Oh, great! I'll let them know." You know, I'll send. Th- I'll tell them yeah. thank you for sending you. And they're like, "No, no, he didn't send me. I just saw that you gave him a gift, and I thought you were the coolest realtor for. You're the most giving agent out there." And I was like, "Wow, that's awesome!" You know. Now, see, now you just mentioned something again that anybody could do if they would just actually go do it. Right. I mean, it's it's right. It's that simple. Yeah, it's just turn on Facebook Live, and you can do this. You know, right. I think people love Facebook Live. I mean, consumers love that because it's real. Yeah. It's absolutely. raw. There's no, it's like Photoshop, right? On Instagram, you Photoshop the heck <laughs> yeah, out of it. Right. This is real. There's no it's Photoshopping. Raw. Yeah. Well, there's a reason why reality TV is so popular. Yeah. Right. It's that, okay, what's going to happen next? Even though a lot of those I'm sure are staged, but right. what you're talking is genuine. All right. So we're going to do what we call get in the ring with the maniacs. Are you ready for that? Yeah, let's do it. Here we go. What's the best advice anyone has ever given you, Daniel? Best advice someone has given me was everybody who you constantly grow your database. Always grow your database, meaning you're, you know, somebody wants to buy or sell a house or somebody in the industry yeah. or a business person. Always grow your database and always give value to them. Okay. That's the best advice. Awesome. Good stuff. What would you say is your favorite mobile app? I think my, mo- my favorite mobile app would be Audible. Uh, you get a lot okay. of good nuggets out of it. You know, driving as real estate agents, we drive a lot. So you got the book, you know, Audible reading the book to you. Awesome. No, that's great. How about sharing with the listeners what you would recommend as one of your favorite books? One of my favorite books, I would have to say, is Seven, The Seven mm-hmm. Levels of Communication by Michael Mayer. Okay. Can I add one more? Absolutely. Uh, 4DX, The Four Disciplines of an Execution. Four Disciplines of Execution. Yes. Execution. Yes. All right. It talks about lead measures and lag, lag measures. A lot of good stuff. Because a lot okay. of so really quick. I know we're no, 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 no. So go ahead. what this book focuses on is is changing your focus. Because a lot of times is you know we always look at well how many escrows did I close? How much commission? How much commission money came in? Yeah. So that's kind of the lag measure. You know right. that's that's the end result. But if you look at the lead measure, you're looking at the scoreboard in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. You're, it's in front of you. How many calls did you make? How many appointments did you set? How many Face to faces that you make. How many break bread or taking out people to yes. lunch that you make? Yeah. That's, no, that's your a, need measure. That's a great example. Yeah. That you looked at there that's the quarters really and everything. Oh, yeah. that's great stuff. How about one productivity tool or software that you use every day? I would have to say my CRM. I, my uh, I currently I'm using Big Purple Dot, um, which is really inexpensive, really okay. cheap. Okay. Uh, you know, my, my broker says it doesn't matter which CRM it is. It's whatever CRM. It can be your Excel spreadsheet as long as you. Use it. Get it. in there, take notes, uh, get phone numbers, call, send emails, send texts. Use it. Activity. Activity. Absolutely. Making calls, making contacts, making text messages, all that uh, good stuff. All right. So we have one more question. You're going to draw it from the mask. Are you all ready? right. Yeah. Here we go. Let's draw from the mask. This is beautiful. What is that? <laughs> velvet? <laughs> oh, there we go. I'll read it. Uh, let's see here. Who was your favorite superhero, or is your favorite superhero, for that matter? All right, my favorite superhero, I would have to go with uh, Superman. Superman. I mean, the guy can fly, throw lasers out of his eye. You know, he, <laughs> he doesn't sleep. He doesn't sleep. That's That would be my favorite superpower to have, too, not not being able not to sleep. Really? I hate okay. sleeping. <laughs> I, I do. I You know, I almost feel like I'm going to miss out on something. I want to stay up. <laughs> but you need your rest. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if, if you I do your activities. That's why I have superpower. I, if, I, if I didn't have to rest, you know, I would take right. that superpower. But I have to rest, so. <laughs> there you go. Hey, jo- I don't know. Joey, do you want to share a superhero? Gosh, he actually stole my superhero. Yeah? I love Superman. The only thing I don't like about him is kryptonite. 
kryptonite. That's he had, the only thing. So, right? Oh, man. <laughs> I was going to use Superman. Really? No. Well, <laughs> maybe. Um, okay, mine maybe isn't so much a superhero, but he has eagle powers. Ego powers? Ego <laughs> powers. Nacho! Nacho, yeah! You got all the mask here, Frank. I figured since I had the mask, I had to throw Nacho. I don't know if Jack Black's <laughs> much of a superhero, but anyway. All right. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for joining us at the Weekly Closer. If agents want to reach out to you, yeah, okay, they can, uh, how can they reach you? Email me. Email me. Here's the email. It's email at danielbarraza.com. Double R, one Z. There we go. Nice and simple. Easy enough. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Daniel, for being here. It's been a, a pleasure. I appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and sign off from Security Title Studios in the heart of the Biltmore. This is Jeff Underwood and Joey Sampaga, the Maniacs. Take care. No demo. Good job, guys. That was good stuff, man. That was good flow, man.